Every game needs a confirmation dialogue. Here is how to build one that doesn't suck. Confirmation dialogues or dialog boxes are the tiny windows prompting a message with a couple of options. In this video, we're gonna build a responsive and reusable confirmation dialog system that can be adapted to all features of your game. Let's start with building our UI. As usual, we start with inserting a screen UI into starter GUI. We're gonna name this confirmation dialog. I'm unchecking reset on spawn and checking ignore GUI inset. I'm gonna insert a frame, name it background. And I'm gonna insert a canvas group. I'm inserting a UI size constraint because I want to make sure this is big enough to read on every device type. So this is obviously too tiny. This looks okay. Make sure your pop-up windows cover almost entirety of the mobile devices, otherwise they will be hard to read. They can have half the area of tablets and make sure they are not too big on PC. Now I'm adding a frame. I'm gonna call this outer. Corner radius of 12 should be fair. I'm adding another frame inside of it. I'm gonna call this inner. As you see the imperfection, your inner corner radius should be outer corner radius minus the padding. So if I make this 10 instead of 8, it will look more natural. Actually, let's add a list layout and I'm gonna add a text label. I'm gonna call it title. Now I want the title to be up. Now I'm gonna write the content here. I'm gonna have buttons around here. Let's do that too. I'm inserting a frame inside inner frame. I'm gonna call this buttons. This looks okay. Now I'm gonna add another text label. Now this looks right. Now I'm changing text X alignment to left, text Y alignment to top. This will scale the text. We're gonna fix this. Now let's get back to buttons for now. I'm gonna add a list layout. Fill direction should be horizontal. I'm removing the background and adding my first button. Now I want this button to have the same height of the parent frame. So its size should be 1 to 0. And I want this to have dynamic size based on the text content of it. How am I gonna do that? I'm gonna set automatic size to X and I'm gonna add a list layout. Horizontal and vertical alignment should be center. I'm gonna add a text label. Again, text label X size should be zero. Y size should be one to zero and automatic size to X. Now, as you see here, it has the exact same width of the text content. Now if I scale the text, it will grow. Text scaled scales the text based on the height of the text label, but you can always limit it with UI text size constraint. So while configuring it, make sure it's readable. So minimum size should be 12 or 14 is fair. You wanna limit it by the max size. 30 or 25 is usually okay. Actually, let's 
do the same for the inner text and the title. Now I'm removing the background. Now I'm gonna add a UI padding to the image button. Let's try 15, 15 by left and right. This looks okay so far. I'm adding a UI stroke and a UI corner. Corner radius will be 0.5 this time, so it will be rounded. I'm gonna call this button cancel. Now I'm changing the text. Let's say deny, dismiss, no, cancel. As you see, it's with its scaling on its own. So I don't have to write resizing codes based on the text bounds. We used to do that. We don't have to do it anymore. You guys are lucky. Now I'm gonna create the other button. I'm gonna name this confirm. Let's change the text inside. And I wanna style this button differently. This color looked definitely better. I'm gonna give it a horizontal flex until it works oh it doesn't gonna give it padding this is too much obviously yeah that looks about right now hold tight this lorem ipsum text is basically a placeholder for this kind of stuff so for a mobile device it's readable as you see for tablet still readable and for short texts I'm just gonna use the first segment of the text. It is still sized properly. Still readable, it's not absurdly big. And the reason I chose canvas group to contain all of them is I'm just gonna twin the transparency of the entire thing, not all the objects one by one. And the reason I used a separate frame for the background because if I add a UI gradient, it will affect all of its children. I'm gonna change this to black and you will see the effect. So this canvas group is just to use the group transparency in R2V, nothing more. Now before moving on to the coding section, I wanna do some minor changes. I just want this confirm button text to be slightly bolder and the title text to be really bold. Okay, we can get to the coding up. Now I want this to be a module script. I'm naming this Affirmation dialog again. I'm moving the GUI under the module. I want to expose only one function for simplicity, of course. I'm gonna call this prompt confirm. Now, firstly, let's work on our fading in and out. I need to get the reference of player GUI because normally we put our UIs into starter GUI and when your character is loaded, the contents of starter GUI is cloned into the player GUI folder. You don't see it here, but when you hit play, it is created and the contents of starter GUI and starter pack are cloned into player GUI and starter gear. As I move the confirmation dialog UI into a module script, I need to get the folder reference manually so that I can move the UI into the folder. Let's get our references. I added this variable because I don't wanna reset the visuals when I call this again. Now let's define our function here. So now let's test our fading in. I'm gonna create a screen GUI and a text button. Let's do this require a confirmation dialog module. Okay, very good. Now let's work on our fade out. Now I'm gonna bind the fade out function to the buttons, for now of course. Let's put it to test. Very good. Now let's work on the actual logic. Firstly, what is this prompt data? 
prompt data is an arbitrary table that we will use to decorate our dialog box. So it will have some various fields. I'm gonna declare this function update. So let's look at what we have here. I want this cancel button to be an optional because not every prompt has to contain a cancelable message. You may just wanna display something like congratulations you get something, you get this legendary item, you get this rare pet, you made it shiny and you want the user to be just clicking on the ok option. So to disable cancel we just gonna not use the cancel field. Watch closely. Now I want to be able to configure the cancel text. That's not the case for confirm. I want it to be enabled all the time. Now let's see what we can do with it. Remember what fields we have. Idle, text, cancel and confirm. Keep in mind that these cancel and confirm should be tables. So let's try to pass this dummy data to our module and let's see what happens. See? And if I just comment out the cancel field, we won't see a cancel option. Now let's get to the real deal of this confirmation dialog. The reason I'm sharing this technique is that I see a lot of confirmation dialogs directly coupled to the parent screen GUI. You don't need to do that. We can pass what should the dialog box do when the certain prompt is cancelled or confirmed. We're gonna do that by passing callbacks. So I'm adding more variables here. I'm initializing them as nil. On confirmed callback, on cancelled callback. Now here, I'm just gonna call the callback if it exists. Now see, why is it saying dummy cancel? Did I not change? Yeah, I'm sorry, I lost 1000 aura. As you see, we can pass the literal instructions to the module. Now we have to clean them up. Otherwise, for consecutive calls, you may invoke some unwanted functions. Now by default we are dismissing the screen, whatever our response is, and you may wanna change some prompts. I'm adding two more variables. And I'm gonna use this flex to wrap the fade out expression. And we can just pass it as a variable in our prompt data. Now if I suppress it on cancel, now how is that gonna help us? With these two flags we are able to chain prompts now. So I'm gonna create more data, let's say dummy step 2. Now I'm gonna embed this step 2 into confirm. So we need to suppress auto dismissal on confirm. So the intended behavior for this schema is to dismiss the window on cancel and proceed to step 2 on confirm. Let's test. So nope dismisses it. Yup takes us to step 2. We can go one step further. Actually, we can define as many steps as we want. Now, I know why this is happening. Let me explain really quick. So when we are updating, we are overriding our callbacks. So it happens in cleanup. Your confirm callback rewrites itself, but right after we nullify the variables. Now, how can we prevent that? We're gonna transfer the callbacks to temp variables like this. We move the nullification. 
Now we moved our callback, we nullified the actual references that the buttons use and we invoked the callback from the temporary variable and we nullified the temp variable and we are done. Now I'm gonna repeat it for cancel. Now we can actually define infinitely many steps of dialogues. Actually let's create step 4 as well just to prove our point. Actually, let's remove the cancel from here and so on first step nop dismisses yup takes us to step two and all working as intended now if you want to make things a little bit easier you can go ahead and define some types remember what we used title text Cancel, confirm, and suppress auto dismissal on cancel and confirm. Title is a string, text is another. We have cancel and confirm. Actually, they are of the same type with one text field with string and on select field being a function. And we have our flags. It's not that necessary, but it can make things easier for you. You will just gonna do this like prompt data, define the type as confirmation prompt data and when you hit dot you will see the fields. It's not really necessary, I mean it's not a so advanced, so nested data type, it's pretty self-explanatory looking at the update function, but feel free to edit. Now that the implementation is done, we can talk about what advantages we have and what more we can do. As you see from the prompt data, you can easily modify how the window looks. That includes color, font, you can even add image or viewport frames. All you need to do is to embed whatever you want into the prompt data and change the update function accordingly. These customizations make great exercise for extending the system. The biggest advantage is it encapsulates the UI logic. And you don't have to implement a dialog box for each feature. You just pass the game logic as callbacks and the module invokes them without having to know what they do. This principle is called the separation of concerns. We decompose the software into smaller systems. We design the systems in a way that they have little to no information about what the others do. This makes our software easier to read, understand, test, debug and build upon. Because we separated the game logic from the UI. But we didn't separate the UI from the game logic yet. And you have every right to be intimidated by these many lines of prompt data. To overcome this, we can implement a helper layer. It will basically be another module to call prompt confirm function with preset prompt data, exposing functions tailored to your game logic. This way, prompt data is abstracted away and your UI codes will keep looking clean. Alright, that's it for today. I hope you found what you came for and I hope you liked what you found. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. You can find the model link in the description. I'm also sharing this under the resources section in my Discord channel. Feel free to join us, let's grow together. And as always, thanks for watching, have a nice day.